And what I'm going to do here is show you uh, two quick rendering styles. The first one is uh, just fast, low quality, and slow, high quality, with uh, a particular setting changed. Uh, the setting in here is called full screen preview, and I'm going to let you see the two rendering processes. I'm going to speed, I'm going to time accelerate them just so they're a little easier. Uh, this one should take about a minute. I'm not sure how long the high quality one will take. I'll tell you at the end. And I'm going to show you what full screen preview does and explain the purpose of it. And you can see the difference between the two. With the fast but low quality that has the fast preview enabled, it resolves the entire screen all at the same time. So you can see sort of where the light's going to fall, where the background's going to be, how the objects are generally going to look, and it slowly brings it into resolution. That doesn't make the rendering mode actually faster. It was faster because we had it at lower settings. What makes it faster is that it reduces what's called the time to decision. So if you decide to drop out of that rendering, you decide that that rendering isn't any good or that it's perfect, you can then just let it finish. But when you're doing multiple renderings over and over and over again, that fast preview mode will actually give you the ability to cancel your rendering earlier when you decide that it's not done. I mean, that whole rendering took less than a minute and a half. This one's already at a minute. With the slow high quality, what it did was the indirect lighting first. So you got to see where the lighting goes. That always sort of happens full screen at the same time. But then the rest of the rendering is done in what's called buckets. So you can see these different squares. And generally, you'll have one of these squares finishing for each core of a processor that's actually going. It'll do what it's going to look like exactly from the center outward, generally because when you're looking at the center of the screen, you're seeing what you want. This rendering mode overall start to finish with fast preview enabled if the quality settings were the same would actually be a little faster because the fast preview mode takes a little more work to do but at the end you're both going to have the same image if you have fast preview enabled or not based on your quality settings those are completely separate the point of this is just so it reduces time to decision like for instance if i needed to see the center of this rendering and the sides i'd have to wait so far already double as long in order to see if those settings were actually going to stick or not and as you can see, this rendering mode isn't particularly high quality. I'll probably rename it to medium quality. Uh, you can see that the geometry is fine, but the lighting, uh, the indirect lighting and the different shadows, they're a little phased, they're a little aliased. So you wouldn't want that in an absolute final quality rendering. So that name's a little inappropriate, high quality. There you go. And that rendering finished in about four minutes. So that took about four, maybe three and a half, four times as long as the other mode and isn't that much better. It's just because we turned a few quality settings higher. Now we have a few rendering styles prepared in this document for you that are ready to go. Uh, we don't want to make you wait through the rendering settings, but here, there's a preview of a few of these. These are the realistic rendering modes that we've done. Now, of course, you can see here, you can see the actual wobble in the glass. Very crisp, no aliasing whatsoever, nice shadows, nice crisp shiny objects. The shadows are accurate. Uh, everything was turned pretty high up in order to do this texturing, or in order to do this render. And there's just a few, uh, these are just images. If we had done these as, as viewports with uh, the, the rendering cache saved, this document, which is already huge because of all the textures and save views and high definition backgrounds in here, the t but file would be too big. So we just stuck these in as images. You can feel free to take any of these views and render them in any of these rendering modes that are the higher quality ones to get these results. So these are a few of the realistic ones. Uh, here's one that actually uses camera effects. So this one had camera effects enabled and was done from a camera. And you can see a lot about how to use this tool in the uh, RenderWorks Getting Started guide. There's a chapter on camera effects that explains how to do something like this. You get that fuzzy background with the clear foreground. And here you have the various night modes where the lights have a little bit of a glint to them. And this isn't done in post-processing. This is actual, see this lens flare effect? This isn't done after the fact. This is actually done in it. This is actually done with um, a RenderWorks camera. You can have lens flare directly to it. So that's how this effect was done. None of this was done in post-processing. And here's our exterior render. Just a nice quick example and we also have over here artistic uh, now the difference between these two there are two different types of rendering styles they're basically both rendering styles but it has two different modes here so we won't save these changes but we'll switch one of these over to there's realistic which is what I showed previously and then there's artistic these are artistic render modes down here and some of them are combinations of the two so toward the bottom you'll get the ones that say sketch render these are artistic render modes. You can see it'll have an edging to it. And it's done this way. This is still a realistic rendering mode, even though it's getting a sketch to it because the sketch was turned on for these particular lines. 
I can switch it over to an artistic rendering mode and you'll see the options change. We no longer get the options for quality because the geometry wheel turned up. These are basically variants of the hidden line rendering style. These aren't live, these are just done flat after the fact. But that's the difference between the two. If you want the sort of either cartoonish or the, um, yeah, the, the cartoonish styles or you want to take the, uh, the hidden line approach and you don't want light, you don't want transparency, that's what the artistic styles are for. But see this mode here, this was still done with edges on top of a realistic style to get these shadows and things like that. Shadows are not possible in just the raw artistic modes. So this here, this is raw artistic. There's no transparency, there's no shadows to it, it's just lines. But you can combine the two, and this is just an inverse of it. So it's a black background with white lines. It's basically the same as this, just inverted colors. But you can also combine the two. This is a pretty good combination of both uh, the artistic edging and a realistic rendering mode. The reason you might want to do something like this is it's extremely difficult to get to realistic, uh, to get to photo real images. To try to get to photo real rendering, even if you knew exactly what you were doing, your rendering times could be upwards of a day or even three days. It's, it's a huge amount of computer processing time in order to get a photo real image, even of a simple glass with proper caustic applied to it. It's extremely difficult. So attempting to go all the way is very difficult, but you'll notice, if you notice like old video games or old movies where they were trying to do something that looked realistic, they age very poorly. But when you see a video game uh, or an older movie, uh, I'm gonna take the example, Mario Brothers. Mario Brothers aged pretty well because it doesn't attempt to look like real life at all. If you can switch your style from a photo real render to something that looks a little cartoonish, like this has edges and lines, this isn't quite what is expected in reality. No one's looking for the mistakes anymore. You can see this bright colors look great. The shadows look fine. This looks good, but you're not expecting, oh, well, this is not exactly how this chair would look on the ground because you're just not expecting it to look photo real because you've gone for another artistic style. No one would be angry about the transparency of this glass in this style because it's obviously you've taken some artistic license with it. Now, that's not really an excuse to not do the work. It's more of just a reminder that rendering is an art. It's not a si it's it's got scientific elements to it certainly, but it's an art. What you're going for is what you want. There's n very little right or wrong when it comes to rendering. It's more about efficient versus inefficient, which I hope I've helped you understand a little bit of during the course of this guide. There we are. And now these rendering styles, uh, all of these are in here and available for your use. Uh, I don't believe they're labeled but you can go through quickly and try rendering modes and get the different effects. So you can see here, we've removed the furniture, but now we still have the transparent glass and the reflectivity of the glass, but also a cartoonish edge look to the other objects that are in here. You can really mix and match things. And here, this one actually has a background. This one had a black background. And this one has environment lighting as well. You can mix and match things to a strong degree. I believe color has been removed from this other than the background itself. You can mix and match things to do a lot of work without having to go into Photoshop. And again, RenderWorks styles are a resource, so you can open another new blank document. That'll be great. Switch your resource browser so you're still looking at the Toyo Ito Pavilion file, and just import these. And then in your document, you'll have the RenderWorks styles you want. I don't recommend trying to import everything into the same document, otherwise your file will get very big. This demo file is huge uh, because we haven't purged it, we haven't cleaned it. There's a lot of resources in it that we wanted you to have that you generally wouldn't keep all in your active document. You'd mostly make a resource out of it. Um, the Toyo Edo Pavilion file is actually a good file to make a resource, uh, to make into a resource and add to the browser that way.